SMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment, which is going to be talking about the Royals and the interest they do have in the bullpen trade market. So let's get into it. So yesterday, as I talked about a little bit before, Jeff Passan dropped a fat article about the trade deadline, detailing a lot of teams and what could go on with them and what they could do there. Now, one of the main things there was talking about the Royals and you know how amazing they've done this year, kind of exceeding a lot of expectations. And he talked about how they are looking for relievers to trade for and are canvassing the bullpen market. Now, this makes a lot of sense, as right now the Royals are a great team. I mean, are in firm contention for a wild card spot, have been one of the most surprising teams this year, and have been really, really good. But the one problem I think they have had that everyone knows is the bullpen. They have an ERA currently of 4.44, which is 25th in all of Major League Baseball, which is very bad. You know, they do have some good pieces. John Scribler, who they traded for from the Red Sox, has been very good, but some of their signings like Will Smith and Chris Stratton just have not moved the needle and really have not been great, kind of been a dud. So I think when you're looking at this team, you, they think that, okay, this is our year. We are finally going to be in contention. We're finally going to be really good. When you're looking at that, I think it's very clear that they need another bullpen arm and they, need, they are going to canvas the our market for them. I think there are, a lot of, there are a lot of people they could trade for. I mean, this team is very good, very young, and I think this could be one of the missing pieces to them to making a long-term playoff run. Now, of course, when you talk about the bullpen market, you have to talk about the man on the screen here, Mason Miller, having one of the greatest bullpen seasons we've ever seen in OB history at this point. And he's on the worst team in baseball, probably, roster-wise, I'd say so, or maybe second, very close to the White Sox, Marlins, and the Rockies. I'd say those four teams are kind of the, the worst of the worst. But Mason Miller, of course, has been involved in trade rumors because he is so good and the, the A's are so bad. Now, I don't think Mason Miller does get traded but he is clearly the biggest name on the market this year and also the bullpen market. And if he does get traded, it will require a haul, but a team is getting a superstar closer. Now, of course, I think the Royals are going to have interest in him like every single other team is. They do make a little bit more sense for him because they do simply need a closer so much and they need a relief arm. But at the same time, I don't think they have the prospect capital to trade for a Mason Miller type. You have really have one highly thought after prospect in Blake Mitchell, who is a catcher, who ranks around the top 100 on most uh, on most uh, prospect lists, but doesn't isn't really a superstar kind of prospect. You have other guys like Caden Wallace, Ben Curdna, my, one of my personal guys, Frank Mazzucato, who I still like, first round pick from a few years ago, Blake Walters, Gavin Cross. So you still have guys like that, but at the same time, no one really there that moves the needle or it can be a full big piece for a Mason Miller type trade because of how much control he has and because of how good he has been this year. I think you have to look at more more reasonable fits and more guys that are a little bit more realistic. I would think about, first of all, the main guy I think here for the Royals to trade for, Tanner Scott. Tanner Scott is, of course, the closer on the Miami Marlins, who were awful, and Scott is a free agent next year. So it's incredibly clear that he is going to be traded at the trade deadline. I'd say he's even more likely to get traded than Hazel Cesaro, who Ken Rosenthal ranked as the most likely player to get traded, simply because Tanner Scott is so good and he is a free agent next year. I mean, there's no reason at all for the White Sox, for, not the White Sox, sorry, for the Marlins to keep him on this team. He is one of the best closers in the baseball at this point, has shown that, and yeah, I think is going to very much be gone at the end of the year. I mean, he is a free agent very soon. So Scott currently has a 1.50 ERA for the Marlins this year in 24 innings. He has seven saves. He's only blown one. Uh, after that, you look at his more advanced stats. Cape Renat isn't as high as you'd expect it for a, a fireballer having 9, 9.38. Really not as high as you'd expect. The walks per nine is also a problem at seven, but he strikes out so many guys and he gets out of it that it doesn't really matter. You also have the FIP, which is still great at 1.97. ERA minus a 37, which is great. You have the expected ERA. Uh, sorry, you have the uh, Sierra at 4.78, which is a little high, but the hard hit percentage has gone down from last year, and so has the barrel percentage. So after that, I'm looking at the expected ERA. It's 3.15, which really isn't that bad as well. So I think that there's still a lot to like about Tanner Scott, even though there are some flaws, like him walking a lot of people. But I think that's really the same kind of thing for most fireball and closers like himself. Another thing that Scott brings is he's a lefty. So, of course, you have a big lefty slugger at the end of a game. 
you can bring in Scott and you won't have a problem with it. So I think Scott is very realistic for this Marlins team, for this Royals team to trade for from the Marlins, I should say. He has one year left in his contract, is a great closer, and is very attainable at this year's deadline. I think he would make a lot of sense for the Royals to end up targeting this year. And yeah, I definitely look for that to be a fit mention a lot at the trade deadline. I think Blake Mitchell being a potential part of that would make a lot of sense. Maybe a little too much for an expiring closer, but maybe the Marlins take a shot in the dark on Frank Mazzucato, who is a, still a good pitching prospect, but really has not found his way in professional baseball yet after being the seventh overall pick from the Royals. But if anyone could turn around a struggling pitching prospect, it's the Marlins. We saw it with Jesus Cesardo a few years ago from the A's, and maybe we'll see it again with Mazzucato. But that's just a thought. Michael Kopech is also a fit, I think, fits a lot for the Royals. Of course, Kopech is on the horrible, horrible White Sox. So he is, of course, going to be someone that is involved in trade rumors simply because of the team he is on and him, him having an expiring contract. Has made the transition very nicely from starting pitcher to reliever. Has a lot of great stuff. Walks, again, kind of like the same thing with Tanner Scott. Walks a little too many people, but when you're a fireballing reliever, you kind of just take that with the stuff. Kopech is a guy I think you don't trade for for how good he is now. You trade for him for how good you think he's going to be in the future. This is a guy I think has a lot of potential left in that arm. I think the, the stuff he has is truly incredible. And if a team can get the right, can get it out of him, well, I, um, that is very, very exciting for them. And you're getting a real lockdown reliever arm. I would be very, very excited about this possibility if I am a Royals fan, and I think Kopech going to them makes a lot of sense. Not really sure if he's a closer type, but he's more of a 7th or 8th inning reliever if you can get the right stuff out of him. It would be interesting to see if the White Sox do demand a little bit more from the Royals because it is an in-division trade, but we'll have to see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Some other veteran relievers, I think, that are not closers but could still be good fits for the, for the Royals are Adam Adovino of the Mets, Reed Garrett, same thing, of the Mets, Hunter Harvey of the Nationals, I think, is also a good fit. And really, any team that is selling that has a good bullpen arm, I think, would be a lot, would be a good fit. You could even try for David Bednar of the Padres, of the Pirates, sorry. I don't think they would want to trade him, and I think the chances of that are very low. But, you know, I think if you offer them the right prospect package, maybe they'll take it. Not really sure, but we'll have to see. But I think overall, when looking at this young, exciting, good Royals team, the one thing that sticks out as kind of your Achilles heel is the bullpen and just the lack of what you have over there. I think John Scribler is a great setup man in the 7th or 8th inning, and adding a real closer to the back end would be absolutely great and would make this team so much better. I mean, the amount of talent you have here is incredible. Of course, Bobby Wood Jr., Salvador Perez, MJ Melendez, Michael Garcia, Vinny Plascontino in that lineup. Michael Massey has done good as well. The rotation, absolutely phenomenal. Michael Waka, Brady Singer, Cole Reagans, Seth Lugo, who might be an AL Cy Young favorite right now. So... A lot to love about this Royals team that we didn't expect at the start of the year. But the one glaring hole, I'd say, is the bullpen. And if you can get that fixed, you're going to be a lot better than what we expected. And I'd be I'd be very scared of this team going into the playoffs and the amount of pitching they have. So I think Tanner Scott, a great fit for this Royals team. I think he makes a lot, a lot of sense for them right now. And I'd be very interested in seeing if that is a fit that does end up materializing and we end up seeing. So yeah, that is our third segment here, talking about the Kansas City Royals and the bullpen market for them, and they are canvassing it. We're going into our fourth segment, which is going to be talking about my first uh, all-star b- ballot. It did come out today from MLB, and I wanted to go over it uh, first, American League, and then National League, so we'll be talking about that. So, yeah, we'll be uh, going over my 